Today, we're going to interview Scott Hartwick about the Nikon Z7. All right, welcome to Capture School. Tonight, we are going to interview you, Scott, about the Nikon Z7. You had this for about a month, yeah. and you went through all its paces, and we want to know a little bit about it. Yeah, so, so first, we got this sent to us by, uh, by B&H. So thanks, B&H, for that. They sent it along with the 24-70 F4. Okay. And they also sent the F-mount adapter with it. Okay. So we checked all that stuff out. As far as specs go, I think we've all heard a lot of specs. And uh, so this is two versions of this. This is the 7, which is, is the, the seven, right. this 45.7 is... megapixels. Right. And here. then the Z6 is a, I believe, 24 point something megapixel. But it's a both full frame. So a couple of things that I wanted to bring up, which you I shoot mirrorless, I shoot the uh, Lumix systems, yeah. and um, Paul was just talking to me about something, and I'm seeing on here, it's 493-point phase detect AF system. And everyone that shoots Canon Nikon is all like, wow, you can go all the way to the edges with this. Did this let you go all the way to the all edges? All the way to just about to the edges. Uh, that was kind of handy. Um, look at some of the pictures that we did uh, a little further on. And I'll show you some of the things I did where I've got it way over to the edge where I didn't have to lock, recompose, and shoot. It was really handy. Yeah, and focus and recompose when I teach. Uh, I have a one-on-one -on -one class in a few days. Yeah. And I always teach people not to do that because they go like this, and then they go down and shoot. And if you're shooting at 1.4 or something or 2.8, you lose it's your gonna, focus. Mm -hmm. So um, it's, not a good, it's not a good habit to get into, but with these, you don't have to. Exactly. So, so let's get into some of the stuff I did. Well, the first thing I did was... Well, uh, I had it for a few days. I didn't get to play with it a whole lot, but then uh, Parkwood Studios had a, a First Friday gallery showing that I was exhibiting it. So I brought the camera along. Actually, uh, I wrote an article for, for the Capture School website where I talk about that I handed the camera to a lot of the people here and let them squeeze up a few frames. Yep. And so you can read, so, read some of the impressions from those people as they played with it. But uh, here's a couple of shots that I took with this. And this was all done with the 2470 F4, at F4. Okay. Uh, most of these were either 1600 or 3200 ISO. Okay. And uh, I didn't do any noise reduction on these photos. These cool, are, cool. These are essentially straight out of the camera, a little sharpening, and then done. Excellent. So, so with, your, uh, with your images, were you pretty happy with the way it focused? I was. You know, it's, it's funny because I've, I've had some people tell me that it was kind of slow to focus and they had did a little hunting. As long as there's some contrast, that it was grabbing it. It was grabbing it pretty fast. So when I do my Lumix, I actually can pinch and zoom with the size of this of the focus point. You're able to do that on that as well. Yeah, if you're in live view, you can do that. You, you can, can do that. pinch zoom and, and, and move focus. it around. Yep. Uh, what you can't do though, what your Lumix can do is when you're looking through the viewfinder, you can't move across with your with your thumb and change the focus. You have to use you have to use a little, a joystick. little joystick. Yeah, use the joystick or, gotcha. the, or the the little uh, Deep cursor. Head. Yeah. Um, it may be a setting. Mine was off to do that, so I can do it where it actually fills up. It's kind of like your Wacom, where you can go the whole pad, or you can just use a corner of it, and it fills, it moves everywhere on the screen. And I actually had to set that up. It didn't come out of the box. At least my first GH4 didn't come out of the box like that. I had to go find that, turn it on, make it so it was touch screen focus. So it might be something that you didn't have. It might have be, to... but I went through these menus a lot, looking for for new stuff. And, cool. and the menu system is essentially if if you've shot a Nikon camera. You're going to understand these menus. There's just a couple of new things, and I nice. cover that in the article as well. There's just new stuff that has to do with EVF that's in there. I did not see that, though. But So when you handed it to people, um, one of my biggest things that have turned me off to cameras is ergonomics. How comfortable is it to actually hold for you? So for me, I have, a, I have fairly long fingers, large hands, and, and I like the nice deep grip. My pinky doesn't really come off the bottom. Cool. Uh, Everything else is well within reach of my thumb, and cool. everything is in a familiar place for, for a Nikon shooter. Other shooters, you know, other camera, they're going to have to get some stuff used to, but... Everything's um, backwards if it's a Canon. Yeah, low mount. dials <laughs> here. Uh, my Both adjustments are here and here, right where they cool. need to be. I can get nice. to ISO. It's all right where I want it. Okay, cool. Yeah, very good. How did you get used to the going from a DSLR to the little screen inside the hole? So I liked it. So the next thing we did, <laughs> next thing we did was we went down to the All Souls procession down in Tucson. Yep, yep. And so a lot of these photos, when I would when I would be walking around with the camera, and I would go to lift the camera up to my eye, there was a lag, and I had to actually do like a pre-focus in order to wake the screen up. Okay. I didn't like that. 
Gotcha. That was a problem? It may be just the setting again, a again. two second. I, I sometimes, if it's something like an event, I'll turn my review off too. So I don't want to see the, the picture in there. Yeah, yeah, the picture will show up in there, which is handy. If you're in Arizona, yeah. you don't need a, like a little, one of those Hoodman uh, things. Hoodman loop, yeah. Um, but when you're shooting something fast moving, not so good to see the picture coming up in between each one of your shots. Yeah, so when I was doing so, there was some dancers and mm -hmm. the only light on the dancer was a street light. She was in the middle of the street and she was spinning around. Now, I didn't have it in, in high speed mode, but I was pressing the shutter as fast as I could. It, every one of those shots was in focus. Mm. And were, my, a lot of mine were blurry and it was because I, my lenses were on these cameras. Yeah. <laughs> so we were leaving <laughs> and I'm like, glass. where's my 2.8 lenses there? Yeah. I found them like on the way down. I'm like, ah. So one of the thing about <laughs> these, all these photos from the All Souls procession were done with the, the Nikar uh, 50 millimeter 1.4. Okay. And I shot at 1.8 on everything. Did it? Um, did you lose a stop with the putting the little thingy on? I didn't on it? notice it. Okay, I didn't notice it. So even in even in uh, total darkness like this one, this was really late in the procession. Um, what was it like? Eight thirty, nine o'clock at night, something like that. It was dark. Dark, yeah. Yeah, that was at uh, thirty two hundred, and cool. I still had one one hundredth of a second. Cool, cool, cool. It was great, and there's no noise reduction done to this one either. I mean, that's the image. It's pretty sharp. So they've added touchscreen finally <clears throat> with the 850. They started bringing that in. They've changed the the LCD on top now. It's not that like old school light the way all the cameras yeah. used to be. They've they've made that more like a, it looks like a Timex watch kind Very of where bright. it's like backlit, yep, but Very not bright. blinding. So you and um, how were you? You said the ISO sounded pretty good or looked pretty good in there when looked you got no, lot of, lot, not a lot of noise that yeah. came through. I didn't go to any ridiculous. I went up to 6,400. I didn't go much beyond that. And mine, they, were they were all, usable. mine were all stupid, hate, crazy high because I had a 4.0 <laughs> plus yeah. lens. And when I zoomed on that lens, I was losing even more. I just didn't have the right glass with me. We didn't have enough time to get here and get down there on, on time. So uh, I yeah. kind of, I've shot it five, six years in a row. So I, I just go to really just enjoy just the... It's quite an event. But yeah. yeah. So anyway, so these photos were all great. I was very impressed with the way... And, and like I said, when, I, when you do this, you don't have a lot of time to do... Now this guy, he was way off to the side on the focus. And you were able to just leave I was right just there. able to go there and just, yeah, without the, worrying the about it. The focal looks pretty good for a 4.0 lens too. Oh, no, no. This was all the 51.4. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, so I brought one lens. I wanted gotcha. to stay light and the, the little 50 is really light. I have something I want to ask you, but before I get into that, is there anything else you wanted to kind of go over that you liked or disliked or something you'd like to see? Me, personally, I like the camera. Uh, I like how light it is. I like the grip. I Someone said there's going to be a, uh, a battery grip for it. Oh, okay. Which would be fun because I like to be able to just turn my camera when mm -hmm. I'm doing portraits, that kind of stuff, and not have to just tilt or do the chicken wing. I used to go under and support yeah. it. That's why right. my wrist is messed that, up. Right? It's, it's well, easier. you're not you're not out here with yep. uh, with it. But and I, I was doing an event, do so I'd come in and talk. So I didn't see, like on other DSLRs, there's a cap you pull off and then the, the battery grip will make a connection there. I don't see that here, unless they're gonna have us pull the doors off, Yeah. the battery doors off. I don't know what's happening there. Um, but if they don't do it, that would be a, a, a downside for me. Um, um, a lot of people don't like the fact that this doesn't flip around for vloggers. So it's a tilt screen versus a, a, flip, a flip out screen. It's not a flip out. So the out. GH5s, they flip yeah. out and around, but my so G9. It'll tilt up like this. It'll yeah. tilt down like that, which is good. I use this over the crowds at the All Souls. Yeah. So I was able to just go above my head, point the camera down, could still see. Yeah. Uh, it was good for that. And then this is also good for doing low angle stuff. Yeah, they both have their benefits. I, I don't know that I love one more than the other. I like this style more for street photography because you can just hold it down low and look at it. That, someone could tell you're taking a picture of them. If you put like a little tiny lens on and you flip it out, you look like a movie camera now where yeah. this, you can just flip it out and it can be look like you're playing on your phone almost. Yeah. And you could just be hitting it and taking pictures on silent mode. So, so it has a silent mode, which I tried and thought it wasn't working because the, the well, the, the shutter is just a, a spongy spring. And I'm like, when's it going to take a picture? When's it going to take a picture? And I had taken 20 pictures. Nice. It's so silent. I don't even know it's doing anything. Yeah. And that's the, again, you have to get used to some of those mirrorless yeah. things. A, a lot of people don't like the viewfinder, the way it's a digital and stuff like that. So there's different well, no, things. that I like. Yeah. That I really like. So big thing. So you got it. It got here and you were all excited and you're like, damn it, I don't have a card. So... What did you think about the, the expense and the card? So, so the cards themselves, the cards themselves I like. 
they're they're big, they're robust. It's like uh, a the construction's good. It's a whole new technology, super fast. Yep. Uh, super expensive. So About it's a thirty-two gig XQD. card from Sony for ninety-five bucks. Not cheap. XQD. XQD. Yeah. yeah, but it's the thickness of a CF card, but narrower. It's a lot smaller. It's, yeah. it's physical footprint of it is between an SD card and the CF an card, SCF. but it's thick and it's heavy plastic and some sheet metal on there. I did write a, a blog article for CaptureSchool.com as well, and you can read what I wrote cool. there. Bit of a rant, but cool. Uh, people are complaining about them, and uh, <laughs> personally, I, I like them. I think it's I think it's where we're headed. Cool. Well, yeah, faster is always better with that kind of stuff. So it's the, the direction we're going. Absolutely. So cool. Well, good to hear your thoughts on this. And, um, you know, are you going to be getting one of these in the near future? Or are you going to get a Z6 or wait for a version I two? Know. I don't know. I think I might wait and see if they do, if they if other users are finding some bugs that they need to do firmware updates before I go and take the plunge. But probably, and a lot of the stuff that I do is still life and, uh, and product photography. So I like the higher megapixel over yep. the Z6, that kind of thing. Um, also, so having done that, I did some studio things where I, um, this was an actual, this is a, a photo that I took with the Z7. And then this is what I took with my DSLR at 24 megapixels. Okay, it's cool. Huge difference in the image quality. Yeah. Uh, the problem that I have is that there's no tethering support yet. Okay. It's USB Type-C, which is good. It'll, it'll be coming, ahead, yeah. They... Because it's fast. Yeah. It's coming, but it wasn't there, so I it interrupted my workflow a little. That's Adobe. It's a new camera. It takes them time yeah. for Nikon to send it over to Adobe and Adobe to approve it and test it and get a, an yeah. out. So the next update you'll likely see, um, especially because it's Canon and Nikon, it'll come out pretty quickly. Pretty quick. So my point is that the camera doesn't do many good until that's there. Until it's there anyway. Yeah. Yeah. So. Cool. What else you got to show us? Uh, just a couple of other shots that I took that were just dedicated to this. I mean, this is kind of the stuff I do. Nice. Um, and uh, the article that I wrote for CaptureScroll.com, you'll see this image here. Then it took just a shot of essentially just this area of the label. And these were taken with a 105 micro. And then I did 100% crop on it. And you can see the texture and the fibers. It's all there. Cool. Lot, really lot good sensor. Stuff. And a lot of that's in the lens when we had Mark talking about it stuff is. that the, the lenses, the sharper and more expensive lenses you get, the better, you know. The better glass you need to be using. Yeah. Right? So Because so, the the, uh, the glass needs to resolve. Yeah. And so that's why I use that lens. And yeah. uh, it was crazy sharp. <laughs> so, yeah. Check out the article. It'll all be there. All right. So, That'll yeah. Be up soon. Check out that, uh, that article at CaptureSchool.com if you haven't checked it out. Um, the video will be up as well so you can check this all out. And... Uh, yeah. And then if you do want to purchase one of these, you can find the links uh, below for B&H. Yep. And uh, thank, thank them for sending it to Absolutely. you to check it out and everything. And, and now um, it's got to go back. <laughs> now it's got to go back. <laughs> I'm waiting for my, my Lumix full frame to come. It's, it's going to be on par with a lot of this stuff with the Sony and with this. Everyone's yeah. kind of pushing towards giving Sony a little bit more of a challenge. Yeah, it would have been nice to have both both this and the and the and the Lumix in the studio at the same time, but that's not coming out till January, February. February is when it may start shipping. So yeah. like more likely beginning of well. March. So I've never really bought into the four thirds thing. It's gonna give options now, like go oh, hiking yeah, yeah. or go on that down on that trip, bring that in the yeah. studio, use the full frame. So again there we talked to, I just watched a video that uh that just is getting put out about us talking about full frames. And we talked about that, the ball peen hammer and the sledgehammer. Yep. Not going to hang pictures with the sledgehammer. So yep. sledgehammer and Nikon did a ball peen hammer. And then, you know, they yep. have, they have a lot of options now. They do. Cool. Yep. All right. All right. Awesome. Well, thank you for reviewing this and be sure to check everything out on captureschool.com and be sure to like, and subscribe our, to our videos and we'll see you at the next video. Thanks for watching.